the Prime Minister, President, Vice President, Ambassador, uh, dear colleagues, ladies and gentlemen. In Hungary, it took 46 years for this neo Renaissance building at 60 on Rashi Ut to be truly reborn and become a multifaceted symbol of the cruel and bloody history of our 20th century. In the winter of 1944, the Nazi Arrow Cross, the Hungarian Nazis, moved here in order to torture hundreds of our Jewish compatriots in the basement of their House of Loyalty. And in 1945, Hungarian communists, arriving under the protection of Soviet tanks, established themselves here so that Hungary's secret police, known as the Fist of the Party, could decide on a class basis who was friend and who was foe. It was only after the revolution of 1956 that the organization whose defense of the communist state was paid for with the suffering and violent deaths of thousands of innocent people left its palatial headquarters in the heart of Budapest on the city's most beautiful avenue. By then, however, the wars had absorbed so much pain and suffering that the time and history would embed the building's dark genius into the subconscious of the city. There is enormous power in this building. These are the words of Prime Minister Viktor Orban on the 24th of February 2002 at the opening ceremony of the House of Terror Museum. He continued, quote starts, the power of the victims, the humiliated, those nearest and dearest to them, those who feel for them, the nation, a museum instead of reprisals, recompense, or revenge. This is also a way of signing an agreement with the history. The reason we need museums like this is not to give our children a direct personal experience of fear, terror, and humiliation that will make them shudder. We want our children to grow up in Hungary knowing what was endured by those who went before them. We want our children to understand that freedom is not given for free. So this building exists to protect the nation from its own shadow." Quote ends. This was a historic milestone because then, just, uh, just over a decade after the fall of communism, Hungary was the first country to open a museum and memorial site that placed side by side the two totalitarian dictatorships that had been focused on, forced on us by the powers that had occupied our country between 1944 to 1989. This took courage because in Western uh, Europe, more than 20 years ago, the atrocities of National Socialism were considered unique and incomparable. But Professor of History Maria Schmidt, founder of the House of Terror Museum, ignored this prohibition because she was convinced that Nazi and communist crimes had shared roots. Hungary had experienced both, in part simultaneously and in part consecutively. After decades of silence, there emerged a place where the protagonists in our collective history, the victims and the perpetrators, have been named. And not by framing history in ideologi ideological terms, but by asserting only the traditional values and interests of the national community. It was a heretical idea. And in a country like many parts of the eastern part of Europe, where after the end of communism, the post-communist continued to fight battles of succession for exclusive possession of the past. From the outset, this elite feared the very existence of the House of Terror Museum because it could lead to the disintegration of the left's remaining myth, the, to undermining the undermining of its fragile legitimacy and its loss of the exclusive possession of the past. The members of the vanguard that learned, and of course still live to, the Orwellian dictum who controls the past, controls the future. Who controls the present, controls the past. It was no accident that they launched a full spectrum attack. Ladies and gentlemen, 
At the opening ceremony of the museum in 2002, more than 150,000 people gathered together, their candles sweating on the Ashiut in light. But the commercial television channels and the following morning's newspaper sent a very different images. Why, why so happened that? Uh, they spoke about political provocation, hatred and fear mongering. The creation of the museum was characterized as, as a campaign stunt. It was, a, it was as if all those who did not want the past to be as encapsulated in a museum had prepared their reports in Advar in, in advance, regardless of the event. Its opponents first used aesthetic and legal arguments to attack the facade and the so-called blade wall or burning frame bounding the street front. They criticized the choice of site, the historical concept, and the museum's name too. They questioned the professional credentials of the exhibition's creators and the expertise of the curators of the public foundation overseeing the museum. They claimed that the House of Terror Museum is not a museum, but an exhibition at most. Suspecting irresponsible spending, they investigated all the museum's expenditure. They threatened to implement financial and organization changes. Plans were drawn to rename the museum, reorganize in exhibitions, and swell this, uh, its board of trusted with more political independent uh, historians. But by then, the House of Terror Museum had already been under attack for months, as long before its opening, it was targeted with the objections that, with varying degrees, of addition and modification would be repeated over the following years. So let's take a look at these. The systematic smack campaign uh, waged uh, against the House of Terror Museum started a few months before the opening, official opening. All these criticism of the museum were made before anyone had even seen is it plays with their own eyes. One of the socialist MPs, uh, said at the time that the museum's method of construction is terrorist and that the aesthetic message of the building itself is terrorizing if, if the descriptions are to be believed. Some wrote of the defilement of the entire city, while others feared that the blade wall designed for the building would present an obstacle to András Jude becoming a world heritage site. The panic was in vain because Andrashio did indeed become a World Heritage Site just after months of uh, opening the museum. Members of the Vanguard described the museum as spect a spectacular historical kitsch, a terror plaza, a house of horrors, and even a house of taste terror. As soon as the museum was unveiled, and everyone could see the arrow cross, the five-pointed star, and the word terror side by side on a massive projecting soffit at the parapet level, they launched their full spectrum offensive. The Hungarian Socialist Party, the successor party to the Hungarian Socialist Workers Party, so the communists, reported the museum management to the authorities on the grounds that they were using illegal symbols of totalitarian regimes. The, re the relevant legislation, however, clearly stipulated in Hungary that time too that these symbols could be used for scholarly and educa educational purposes. Ladies and gentlemen, from 15th of October 1944 to 1956, the building at 60 was an important site for the two totalitarian dictatorships. This location has become intervened with a concept of terror in Hungary partly because of the shocking history, historical experiences associated with it, and partly because people were compared to remain silent about them. What happened here could not be spoken about for decades. Generations have grown since grown up that have no direct experience of either terrorist system, but historical remembrance has preserved for them the tragic memory embodied in this building. Despite decades spent attempting to disguise is at prestigious work premises, everyone knew it was not what it seemed. We Hungarians 
treated it like so many other oppressive legacies that burdened our daily lives. It belonged to a suppressed, unresolved part of our past. With the creation of the House of Terror Museum, the founders sought to initiate it, share reflections on the decades forming our past, and to begin the grieving process. The need for this, in connection with the Holocaust, was expressed with unassailably precise prose by the Nobel laureate and Holocaust survivor, Imre Kertész, who warned that without remembrance, there is no reconciliation and no closure. The creators of the museum were able to distinguish the building from its surroundings so that everyone could see it was the house of terror. They created a wide horizontal platform cantilevered out from the building's cornice into which they cut out the symbols of the two terrorist dictatorships and the word terror. Sunlight shining through these voids project onto the facade, the totalitarian symbols and the word which contrast with the shadow of the surrounding solid parts of the platform. The shadow cast on the wheels and the walls painted grey to evoke the secret police that once occupied the building. Symbolizes the terror that cast a shadow on our lives and everyday activities. The entire frontage is in darkness when the sun is at its highest, evoking the title of Arthur Kersler's novel Darkness at Noon. But the projected symbols fragment as they move across the facade of the building, which has become a monument to the victims of dictatorships, because what they symbolize no longer has power over those victims, nor over us. The building is bordered by a black mourning frame so that everyone can see that it has become a monument to the victims. The site evokes the memory of dictatorships, yet it also signals to us that we need lo no longer fear it, that we can enter through this portal and it will reveal its secrets to us. Entering to the museum, one is greeted by two huge vertical slabs of polished granite, identical in form, but not in color. The one is red and one is black. The red slab commemorates the victims of communist terror, while the black one is commemorates the victims of Aerocross Party and Aerocross Terror. The structure of the exhibition has a strong framework. It begins with the Nazi and Soviet occupations, which we called double occupation, and ends with the final withdrawal of Soviet troops. On the two floors, the museum shows the nature of the Arrow Cross and communist period, periods of terror from October 1944 to 63. The basement reconstruction commemorates the victims of both anti-human dictatorships and the names and photographs of those who served both regimes are displayed on the wall of the perpetrators. The exhibition is broken with this uh, some kind of orthodox exhibition organization principles typical of museums. So it has banished dry, boring text to information stands in the rooms, presents only the most essential data, and rather aims to appeal to emotions with images, sounds, films, text extracts, and objects from the period. It gave pause for thought the, that the accusation which the post-communist government used in its political attacks on the exhibition's historical concept six months later had already been made as early as January 2002, so before the museum was opened. These were the accusations. The exhibition does not deal with the interwar era um, and thus effectively rehabilitates it does not deal with the tragedy of the Hungarian Jewry, as it does not present the Hungarian Holocaust. It exaggerates the crimes of communism, it extends the communist era of terror up to the fall of communism, and it shifts the responsibility of Hungarian evildoers uh, onto foreign occupiers. Some claim that the, it is anti-Semitic because it emphasizes the role of the Jewish revenge, while Others accuse it of cover dice for not discussing the role of the Jews in, under the communist era. The accusations are, how can I say, uh, was unfounded. As the museum deals with the tragedy of Hungarian Jewry, 
through photographs and film footages displayed in several rooms. More detailed discussion of the hunger and Holocaust doesn't, doesn't appear for several reasons. One is, before the museum was established, the first Orban government had already decided to establish the Holocaust Memorial Center in Pavo Street. The second one, the Hungarian, uh, they chose not to highlight the Hungarian Holocaust, not only because another museum was being built, but also because in the museum at 60 Andrashi, any substantial presentation of the tragedy of Hungarian Jewry during the Second World War would have run counter to the concept of the exhibition's designers, as the Hungarian Holocaust cannot present it either as a prelude or supplement to the history of the building. Third one, the Holocaust is a Hungarian and pan-European tragedy that can only be portrayed in an independent presentation. And last but not least, uh, it would have been misleading to include the tragedy of the Hungarian jury in a building with be, which became notorious primarily as the headquarters of the communist dictatorship's terror organizations. In parallel with the criticism of the historical concept, there have been claims that the museum's location is inappropriate. One of the leftist historians said that it's a sick idea like building a temple to Satan. Uh, this lady uh, did not elaborate why on why she thought that it is a sick idea for for a place like 60 Andrashu to become a memorial museum for the victims. So we can only conclude that she had uh, probably never heard that there are places and sites which are almost predestinated by their specific genius Loki to be designated as museums or memorials. There are also those who said that this building symbolizes neither Aerocross nor communist rule, and this is more than a joke. The exhibition, as I have mentioned, has a strongly framed structure. The farewell room depicts the so uh, Soviet troops withdrawal from Hungary in 1991, the reburial of the communist politician Imre Nagy and his fellow martyrs. This was the first speech uh, when Orban, Viktor Orban, speak a political speech, and uh, or the visit of Pope John Paul II to Hungary first in 1991. The aim for the visitors to leave the museum feeling liberated. The images refer to the present age showing a democratic free country, a Hungary where an occupying army is no longer stationed and where its free citizens can express their political convictions without fear, even though uh, for more than 13 years from now, the international, international media has been trying to convince its readership uh, of the opposite. Uh, good luck for them. Of course, the Museum Director General, Maria Schmidt, was not excluded from the smear campaign too, and attempts were made to humiliate her at a professional and personal level too. Uh, some described the museum as the objectification of, a, of the idea of a very confused mind. To sum up to above, so the exhibition is anti-Semitic, pro-Jewish, unbalanced, and most importantly, most importantly, a falsification of history. The, pur the purpose of these opinion pieces, however, was not at all to provide balanced information or to generate true professional debate. All, all, all along, they had a single and clear objective in mind, using salami tactics to discredit point by point the museum and everyone who connected with it. More than 20 years later, we can only feel sorry for them. Ladies and gentlemen, one of the recurring themes uh, in the attacks of the House of Terror Museum was the allegation that it was created for party political purposes and that its opening was timed coincident with the start of the government's political campaign for the up upcoming election. But many people felt that the opposite was true because that the incessant series of unrestrained attacks before and after the opening of the museum fitted perfectly, perfectly clearly 
into the brutal, aggressive campaign of the opposition party, the socialists, which revived memories of the, of the left demonstration of force, so typical of the era of the one-party state, one-party system. In many elderly people who lived under communism, old, uh, old fears were revived and old reflexes were triggered. Even now, it is inadvisable to talk about these kind of things. After the parliamentary, ele parliamentary elections of 2002, the post-communists formed a government which immediately ordered an investigation into the management of the public foundation running the House of Terror Museum. This put political pressure on the creators. At the same time, a new audit of the financing of the museum's creations was launched. Both investigations, like the State Audit Office investigation completed a few months earlier, concluded that in all respect the use of public funds had been in accordance with the law. On the 17th of October 2002, Prime Minister Peter Medjashi paid an an unannounced visit, an unexpected visit, to the museum as a private individual. After the visiting the exhibition, he wrote the following comment in the guest book. Instructive. It is important for young people to become aware of this, and I would like to see it enriched further by showing terror of all kinds. I congratulate you on excellent work as historians and on the overall design. On leaving the building, he, however, he said to the newspapers and the reporters, I would have arranged the proportions differently and paid more attention to the victims of Nazis, to the persecution of Jews. Medjish's visit was a well-planned campaign stunt, time to the coincident with the run-up to the local elections campaign in Hungary, but also a gesture that both sides could interpret according to their own tastes. The Prime Minister's legitimacy had imploded after it emerged that he had been a counterintelligence agent in the communist era, and he obviously found difficult to walk through the crowded exhibition spaces. Although opinion posters found the Prime Minister's approval rating on a stable, a huge proportion of the country found it unacceptable for a top secret officer in the dictatorship state security service to hold the post of prime minister. Medjish's visit was a gesture to both sides, but the post-communist veterans of the culture of war were extremely incensed by this, and so they targeted both the credibility of the prime minister and the, and the economic foundations of the, of the House of Terror Museum too. They tabled an amendment to cut the museum's budget by almost 400,000 euros, which was voted through by the parliament. At the request of the museum and, uh, and for the sake of his own political reputation, Prime Minister Medjashi committed himself to improving the museum's financial situation and the government agreed. At a memorial event in front of the House of Terror Museum in, on the 23rd of February 2003, the day of remembers for the victims of communism, Viktor Orban said the following, quote starts, This building is the only honest piece of confrontation with our past. We felt that this building, Stixi Andrashi Ut, the House of Terror, was an ab abiding source of pain. Today, ever more, ever more of us increasingly feel that it is also an abiding symbol of conscience. Quote ends. This is because people come to the House of Terror Museum both on the Day of Remembrance of the Victims of Communism and on the 16th of April, the Memorial Day for the Hungarian Victims of Holocaust. Candles are also lit in front of 60 Andrashut on the 23rd of October. The same is true on the on the All Saints Day and on the 4th of November, the day of mourning commemorating the defeat of the 56th revolution in Hungary. This museum, this building, is a memorial and a homage. It was made a national memorial by those who wanted to remember the victims, the heroes. But it is also a moral and political stand against the spread of ideas that led to political mass murder. Let us not forget, the main enemy of democracy is totalitarianism, whatever color it is, guys. Of the two totalitar 
sorry, of the two totalitarian dictatorships of the 20th century, Nazism was defeated in war, while communism collapsed. And as the distinguished French historian Stéphane Coutois, editor and co-author of the Black Book of Communism, has said, the maintainers and servants of communism are still with us. The operators of communist regimes were not pr uh, prosecuted at Nuremberg, nor have they been held legally accountable. But there is a, another judgment, the judgment of history. This is the museum that declares the accusations, and it does so especially through the eyes of the people who see all the exhibits in the House of Terror Museum and for whom it holds up a mirror to history as a place of remembrance and as an exhibition. So, the House of Terror Museum was the first step in a process by which the post-communists lost what they thought uh, was their unlimited monopoly over the interpretation of the past, uh, pre uh, the past, the present, and ultimately the future. This fact could not be better demonstrated by more than seven million visitor visitors who have visited the 60 András Youth from, as we Hungarians say, uh, from cellar to attic over more than 20 years. Visitors who, when they see the exhibition, are truly confronted with the painful, cruel, and dark horrors of the past, because the past must be confessed. Thank you for your attention.